having heard some of our remarks earlier, I think it's now clear to just about everyone that the nonprofit sector alone is not enough to reach the sustainable development goals. This is a massive undertaking and is going to require all hands on deck. Governments, NGOs, individuals, and most definitely the private sector. We are thrilled that so many companies, both in the United States and globally, are joining in this effort, including the one represented by our keynote speaker today. Based in the United States, Xylem Water Solutions is a global provider of water technology serving the commercial, agricultural, residential, industrial, and public utility markets. The company operates in more than 150 countries worldwide and employs more than 17,000 people. Xylem has committed to donate 1% of its profits and employee time to water-related causes, including technology solutions to reducing pollution and reusing wastewater. Our keynote speaker today is Austin Alexander, Xylem's Vice President responsible for sustainability and social impact. In that role, Austin oversees the company's efforts to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace, and Xylem's, Xylem's corporate social value program, Watermark. Since she joined Xylem in 2013, Austin has worked in customer service, sales engineering, and investor relations. Throughout her tenure, she has been involved in volunteering and leading events through Watermark. Xylem's corporate social corporate citizenship program that provides water resources in communities around the world and education about water issues. Before joining Xylem, Austin held what sounds like one of the most fun jobs outdoors in the United States. She was a range technician for the US Forest Service, working out of Big Timber, Montana. She studied engineering management at Gonzaga University and earned an MBA at Wake Forest. We are delighted to have her as our keynote speaker today. Please join me in welcoming Austin Alexander. Wow, thank you so much for the introduction. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, that was incredibly powerful and a different way to introduce a conference. So I really appreciate ASME's um, creativity. That really grounded me ahead of this morning. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to join today. I have been learning about this program, the Impact Engineering and the Impact, the Engineering for Change work the last week or so, and just completely impressed about the incredible work that this program is doing um, and something I hope we can continue the conversation on. It's absolutely wonderful. So as, as Diana said, my name is Austin Alexander. I'm Vice President of Sustainability and Social Impact at Xylem. I'll share more about Xylem in a minute, um, but in short, we are a global water technology company. I'm currently working remote from Montana, which I was where I was born and raised and had the pleasure of moving back to um, in 2020. So today I wanna to talk briefly about um, what, what I think engineers and the role engineers play and how corporations and companies as in partnership with nonprofits um, can really work to achieve the SDGs. I'm also, as mentioned, an engineering management degree, but a civil engineer uh, underneath that. So please don't hold that against me. So I'm gonna pull up a few slides um, to help with the first few minutes of this session. There we go. And if you can move to the next slide, please. I'm not very great at talking about myself, so I decided to do it uh, with some pictures. I come from an entire family of engineers. My mom, my dad, my two brothers are all various engineers. Um, so it may be easy to think that I was, that I stumbled or perhaps um, was directed into becoming an engineer. And yes, there was some pressure <laughs> to move that direction. Um, but the real reason I leaned into engineering was in high school. Um, and I'd always been STEM inclined, and particularly I really liked math and I was pretty good at it. Um, but I also found I had a deep love for toilets. And it was early in high school that I realized the, un the immense impact that safe sanitation has on elevating individuals and communities out of poverty with profound health impacts. And so as I moved into my education journey, um, I was considering how I could take this newfound passion and interest around waste and something many people uh, do not want to build a career around. And it was something my mother, 
who's also an engineer, she's pictured below in the blue hard hat with me, um, continued to buzz in the, in, into my ear that engineers save the world. So fast forward a few years later, I'm walking across the graduation stage with my newly minted engineering degree, EIT certification, and I took a job at Xylem. And it's been an incredibly rewarding journey so far. Um, the both my background as an engineer, but also working at a company that's global in nature and crosses so many different geographies has opened a lot of doors for me, both in opportunities for my career and expanding into different areas, um, but also in meeting people around the world and traveling to different geographies and being able to stay rooted in my deepest passion, wastewater. So if you can move to the next slide, let me touch quickly on who is Xylem. Um, we are a global publicly traded company, roughly 16,000 employees. We operate in 150 countries and our mission is to solve water. But why water? And then I'll sum it up across three challenges that we think about. Scarcity, resiliency, and affordability. As you can see on this slide, Three out of 10 people globally do not have access to safe drinking water. And by 2050, about 40% of the world's population will face absolute water scarcity unless there are major interve interventions. And this issue of scarcity, here I feel it in Western United States, as well as many of you around the world in different ways that we're experiencing a significant drought over the past several years. And this is being exasperated by climate change. Additionally exasperated by climate change is the resiliency of our existing infrastructure. By 2050, over 200 million people could be displaced by desertification, sea level rise, and extreme weather events. And all of this has a price to pay. Roughly $40 billion of clean water is lost annually. We call that non-revenue water. Water that where infrastructure is broken, pipes leak, and we're losing the most valuable resource we have and the resource we spent so much energy to obtain and treat is lost along the way. And if you're here in the US like myself, um, infrastructure has been a hot topic and the cost to make the improvements we need across our water infrastructure in particular is immense. There's also a couple other stats not on this slide I'd like you to consider that water and wastewater utilities globally account for just over 2% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. So that's about the same as the shipping industry. And water use and management across all sectors accounts for 10%, a tenth of the total global greenhouse gas emissions in the world. So not only do we face the challenge to continue to provide improved and expanded access to sanitation and clean water. By doing so, we need to do so in a way that has a reduced carbon footprint so we cannot exasperate those challenges I laid out ahead just now. So to give you a flavor of where we play, if you could move to the next slide. Oh, one more slide, sorry about that. Perfect. Um, just to give you a flavor for Xylem, we are the company that provides the equipment, the software, and the services to treat and distribute clean drinking water, collect and treat wastewater, assist the users of water like industrial companies and commercial buildings to be more efficient, and to protect and monitor the water bodies around the world. Roughly half of our revenue comes from public utilities, to give you a flavor. But what I really want to talk about today is what is under the surface of that set of solutions, under the surface of what we think about of the technology, the equipment, the hardware that we as engineers are so familiar to, with working with. And so for that, I'm gonna to turn to the sustainable development goals. And it sounds like from the previous comments, um, if you could move to the next slide, please. This audience is very familiar. Oh, one more, I'm sorry. Thank you. This audience is very familiar with these 17 goals that the world aims to achieve. And if you are not, I highly encourage you to go to the UN SDGs website to learn more. So while all of these goals are important, at Xylem, we're focusing on six in particular that we align not only our sustainability strategy, 
but our business strategy as well. That includes the good health and well-being, gender equality, industrial industry innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, climate change, and the SDG that I spent much of my time considering access to clean water and safe sanitation. So how are we gonna get there on these goals? I mentioned earlier in the session, we have a steep curve to reach in particular SDG six, but many of the SDGs. And if we continue at the rate of expanding services that we are today, we will not reach our goal. And by doing so, if we continue to use the same technology and processes we use today, we will expand the greenhouse gas emission impact of our sector even worse. As I just laid out those stats on greenhouse gases, they're expected to double across the water sector by 2040 if we continue to expand services in the same way that we do today. And to do so, using the existing technology and processes we use, it's gonna cost a whole lot of money. Typically impacting and raising the rates to those that cannot afford services today. So how can we do this? in a way that expands services, is good for the environment, provides the social benefits of clean water and sanitation, and is at a reasonable price that we can reasonably make happen over the next few years. And this is where my call to the engineering community comes in. And I have three areas where I think we can solve these challenges as engineers. The first is innovation. The second is accountability. And the third, is a depth of consideration across equality and social considerations. So first, innovation, something this group is probably very familiar with. Um, in my role, I have the great pleasure of meeting with hundreds of startups, nonprofits, individual designers coming up with the next greatest invention or innovation to solve water. And these are really important. It is the only way we'll be able to advance to get to solving the SDG six and the other SDGs. But I'm also the most comfortable with that because of the rate of innovation that we see. We have much of the technology in our hands today. And we, if we don't, it's in line to be achieved quite quickly. So I'm less worried about innovation because I know that will be an important aspect to solving the SDGs, but that's well underway. And a great example of that is how quickly we're able to produce vaccine, vaccines and respond to a global pandemic using technology that's been developed the past 10 to 20 years. And I think the same thing will be rapid innovation across the water and sanitation sectors over the next few years. The second area is perhaps a little less clear. Um, and it's what uh, my boss, who's our chief sustainability officer, told me when she hired me into the sustainability role that she wanted an engineer running sustainability because the most important thing that we can have as a, a global company based on sustainability as part of our strategy is that we are accountable and credible in our sustainability claims. You're probably familiar with the term greenwashing. It happens a lot. Um, you, some claims of really fabulous sustainability goals or impact or technology that will save the world. Um, and while I don't want to dismiss the excitement around sustainability, we should be, as engineers, holding ourselves extremely credible or accountable, excuse me, that the claims we are making about the innovations we are putting out there are, are accountable and impacted, the impact is assessed in a really engineering and thoughtful way. So no longer can you be the engineer that is purely chugging out technology, which many of you I know are not, but you must also be credible in the, in the way that we're accounting for the impact and holding our organizations accountable as well. And finally, the third is we need engineers that can think about the breadth of challenges across our collective society in all dimensions, not only the techno technological advances, but also the environmental and social impacts that we need to balance. And we need to incorporate all three of those 
into our design and application of technology. So for example, on climate change, like I mentioned, using if you go to visit a wastewater treatment plant in the US, Europe, even the new, new plants that are being built at a rapid rate in areas like China and India, roughly, they look the same. You really, and they probably look the same as they did in the 1990s and the 1980s. Um, and that's because it works. But we have to think about the environmental impacts and the associated greenhouse gases with each new implication of that treatment plant. And we also have to think about the communities in which we're putting in new technology. We can't only use the technology we've always used. We must also innovate in a way that is thoughtful of the entire community. And we also need to bring the community into the design process. Um, I will wrap here in just a minute, but a, a book that I recently read over the last year, which I really like, is called Waste by Catherine Coleman Flowers. And it's a book regarding uh, the issues of septic tank access, sanitation access here in the US in what we call the Black Belt or Southern US. And we as engineers can have a tendency to design a system without thinking about the full impact and cost to the community we're serving. And in order for us to truly achieve the sustainable development, we must consider the implications of the end user and bring them into the design process as we are designing new innovations and designing the applications. Thinking about the full circularity of the system we're applying, the environmental impact, the social impact, the technolog technological advances, and associating community, uh, communicating credible and accountable data to hold ourselves accountable as we apply those new advances. But who is better prepared to do this and balance this and think about the different inputs than you engineers? Um, so my call to you is you're already here, you already care about this, you're thinking about this, continue, educate the next generation of engineers and inspire uh, those being educated today to take the same thoughtful approach to the technological advances we need. Um, so again, thank you for the opportunity to join. I'd love to hear from you. Find me on LinkedIn or Twitter or elsewhere. Uh, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you, ASME and the program for the opportunity to join you. Thank you so much, Austin. Um, those reflections are really powerful and we are so grateful that you will have this commitment to redefining social and environmental value creation and focusing on circularity, as you noted. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Engineers need to be holding themselves and their employers accountable um, and make those claims credible by applying engineering tools and mindsets. We are so honored, Austin, to have you as one of our pragmatic optimists in our corner.